Hey guys, welcome to the shop. My name is Robert Daly of Daly Woodworks, and today I am building a dresser for a customer and wanted to record the process so that you can see a little bit of how I work in the shop, and I'll also be putting together a set of plans for this. Right now, I'm just breaking down the plywood with my track saw, and I am going back and forth to the cut list of my SketchUp model. I typically will sketch out um, on paper kind of the rough idea of what I want or my customer wants and then I'll take it to sketch up and kind of work out the final dimensions. I always find that whenever I start a project I end up tweaking those dimensions a little bit unless I've made it a hundred times and so the final projects dimensions were a little bit different than I ended up with in SketchUp. But I corrected that in the model, so if I ever make this again, I can. So again, I'm just making all the parts. We're using pocket hole construction, and then um, I've made several jigs, so I can cut a rabbit in the back of my panels. Um, I like doing a rabbited back panel that's a half-inch piece of plywood. I feel like that's just stronger than using a quarter-inch sheet of plywood. And here I'm just laying out where that bottom support will go, making sure I get all my measurements right, and then start putting it all together. Um, I did have to edge band this front section. I normally don't like doing that, but I realized that I was going to have an exposed plywood edge, and I really didn't want to do that. I used the fast edge system from FastCap. It's okay. I don't have the money to invest in like a Festool Contoro right now, um, but it's a sufficient way to edge band um, your projects. And you can see now I'm just assembling in it, and I kind of figured this video kind of serves as a shop tour. Um, because I did kind of just film this with the idea of just letting you watch me in the shop. Um, this is basic cabinet construction. It's just a two sides, a bottom, and then uh, two top stretchers to add support, and then with a rabbited back panel. And you can see I'm just gluing, pocket screwing everything together, and it will be sufficiently strong. Um, here's that back I was telling you about earlier. Um, again, I'm going with a half-inch back panel, and I use a half-inch uh, I use half-inch plywood for the drawer bottoms as well, mainly because I don't have room to stock all the different varieties that I can. So I'm finding that half-inch plywood really isn't that much more expensive than quarter-inch plywood, and it makes a lot stronger drawer. And I have found with older antiques. The things I have to repair on them are the drawers because that bottom panel has broken out. So by going with a half inch back and half inch bottom on drawers, that's not going to happen with my stuff anyway. That's just glued and stapled in place. And then you'll find anytime you're doing a cabinet body, sometimes you just got to clamp it together to get it to squeeze tight. Now this is probably the weirdest base frame I've ever done, and then as I've started working on it, I realized like, eh, I probably shouldn't attach that back panel yet, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. So just because of the way I built this, I wanted my reveals to be very specific, so I had to really piece the face frame together and just glue it and place it. You can see I'm just lining up my piece, marked it with a pencil, and then when I cut it, that way I had a nice tight fit. And then I'm just going to be working around. And here's where I realized that, yep, should have not attached that back panel yet because it made it really hard to get in there and do all my pocket hole joinery for the face frame. But you live and learn. Now I'm adding the center support because we're doing two top drawers and adding a little piece there. So that was uh, 
the Craig face frame clamp. I do not like their Auto Max clamps. I just can't get them to work right. So that's the old style with the thumb screw. So sometimes it takes a while to get it adjusted. I don't know if you saw her, but my little helper was out in the shop a minute ago. And this is what made me sad. Is I uh, tore up a piece when I was routing this. I put a half in, a small chamfer on it and tore it out. But that's where Starbond adhesive comes in really handy. I do have a coupon code uh, for 5% off your order um, in there. But this stuff is a lifesaver for either filling small voids or like I'm doing here is I'm gluing on that piece of plywood that chipped out and then whenever I sanded it down I could have stained it because it was a perfect match, perfect fit, but of course with painted, um, you definitely didn't see it once it was sanded. So lifesaver product right there that you should definitely put in your arsenal. Also don't glue your fingers to your woodworking. Pro tip. And now back to working on the face frame and all my reveals. Um, the error that happened there was because I was put a small chamfer on both the face frame material and the edge of the plywood. I've started doing that because it's really hard to get it perfectly aligned. And then if you start sanding your face frame flush, you might sand through the veneer of the plywood. So instead of making it a defect, I make it a feature where I just route both edges and have a small little chamfer there that's just kind of draws your eye to a nice little small subtle visual detail you see i added a little bit of bottom clips for this foot so um, those bottom cleats just helped hold it in place and now it's time for sanding montages if you look close you'll see our poodle running around in the shop um, she was hanging out with me while my wife was gone and she doesn't like being alone inside the house, but she doesn't really like the noises that come in the shop. So she wasn't too thrilled to be out here with me, but she was happier with me than she was out in the shop. I have a whole video on making tabletops, so I'm not going to cover that here, but I will link to that in the description. Um, but you can kind of see how work flows around my shop. I try to make... A big, um, a big circle over and over and over again in my shop as I'm working. I wish I need to get a step counter to see how many steps I make a day. But my tabletops are always dominoed together. It's just a great tool for alignment. It saves you a ton of time sanding. And again, this is my wall-mounted panel clamp. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. It's literally a piece of conduit held in place with hooks, and then my pipe clamps just sit on top of it with, at an angle. Now, on this piece, we didn't want to use any hardware, and that made it a little bit tricky to figure out how to make it where you can open the drawers. So I came up with a profile, you'll see it more in a little bit, where I routed a cove, and then I cut a small handle, well no, I cut a small handle, I routed a cove, I then put a chamfer on it, and that's where a router table is great. This is not a fancy router table, this is a cheap router, uh, skill router, which is a great starter router if you just need one. Um, and then a Rockler plate, and then a shop-made um, Polk Smart router fence. And it works really well. I actually really, really like the router fence, but I do wish I had a better router lift. Anytime you're doing a big cove, chamfer, something like that with your router, take small bites. You could see how I was raising the router bit up each time there. And now I'm trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to have these drawers really tight together, but you also have to be able to get your hand in there and open them. And that's why you can see that there is a large chamfer on the bottom of each drawer. So a lot of trial and error went into this project. And that's really the projects I like is... No, it's not just a standard cabinet. No, it's not just a dog kennel. It's not something I've made a hundred times. It's... Yes, I have a design, and yes, I have a 
drawing of what we're going to produce. But as I'm building it, there's little issues that pop up that I have to solve, like adding this small quarter inch recess for a pool. And that solved all the problems that I was going to have opening the drawers. And as always, make a jig. And this is the uh, painter's tape and CA glue trick. Um, I personally came up with this trick. I'm the inventor of it. So, you know, if you saw it 40 years ago on a uh, PBS woodworking show, uh, they stole it from me before I was even born. And here is our drawer faces. So you can see that cove, chamfer, little recess, and this worked out really nice. I'm really proud of how that turned out. And of course I'm saving that jig just in case I ever have to make more drawers like this. So I use wooden drawer slides, drawer, wooden drawer glides or runners or whatever you want to call them. And um, at the end of this video, I'll actually link to that video, which will then link to my drawers playlist. I basically cover side mount drawers, uh, slides, under mount drawer slides, and then wood drawer slides. I switched to wood because the drawer slides I really like started beginning back order due to all the supply chain issues. And then I just fell in love with the way well-made wood drawers work. And so I'm just making my runners and my supports. I'm using hardwood for those runners and then plywood for kind of that side-to-side -side support. And I also, in this project, I moved to solid wood drawer slides mainly because I hate edge banding. No, not drawer slides, solid wood drawer boxes because I really don't like edge banding things. This is the center support I'm making here, and then I'm just going to screw that into place and you'll see it. Now, if you're doing wooden drawer slides, and really any drawer for that matter, you need to make sure you get it square. And having it square to your front is exceedingly important because if you get it off, your whole drawer might not line up. Um, I actually think it's a little bit more forgiving with wood drawer slides because you can be a little bit looser, but with uh, metal slides, if you get it off a little bit, sometimes your drawer won't sit flush no matter what you do. And there I'm just marking my square line with a pencil, and then when I screw it in, I'll make sure I'm holding it on that line. And spoiler, um, for a future video. You'll notice I'm using a Fez Tool C18. Um, I actually did a video uh, a few months ago of why I sold all my Fez Tool drills. And then I realized, oh wait, I actually really like them. Um, yeah. In my shop, I work alone now. And this little low cart that I made has been super helpful. It's about 20 inches, and that's where I do most of my assembly of the big stuff, and then go from there. So what I had to do was I didn't think about, as I designed this, that I needed to have that same chamfer that I put on all the drawer uh, fronts on that top rail of the piece so that your hand would fit in there on the top rail. So I hand planed it as much as I could, um, started with my old 1930s four and a half and then went to a block plane that a friend actually gave me um, and now I'm gonna have to go in with a chisel to finish that up so get yourself some good hand tools um, these are not great chisels these are Home Depot DeWalt chisels um, I've just made sure to get them really sharp and I keep them sharp and you know what? They work pretty good. I'm sure the day that I go and pony up like real money for a real, like, I don't know, Lee Nielsen chisel or something, I'll think these are absolute garbage. But um, any chisel can get sharpened. It's just how well does it hold an edge and how balanced is it? These are kind of clunky. And there you go. And you can see I actually messed up and had to use some CA glue there. 
So somehow I actually got that dialed in really well with just hand tools and a sander. Um, it actually looks like I routed the profile. So now it's time for me to make the drawers. Um, again, make yourself jigs, put them in a jig drawer. Um, this is basically my setup for the router height, the distance from the fence, um, all of that. So as I route on my drawer material, I can just route it, cut it, fit it. And here's kind of a wide angle from the front door of my shop, just so you can kind of see this is whenever you walk into my shop, this is what you see. Um, start the table saw, kind of work around in a big U-shape. I have my main assembly table in the middle, and this is this is where I work every day. And it's a good layout for the space. Um, I did dedicate um, that back corner to the spray booth, and that was I wish I could do without a spray booth. I don't like painting at all, but you gotta have it. And you can see, I just use pocket hole joinery for my drawers. Um, I posted on Instagram the other day, I made a drawer the wrong side, and I uh, threw it up in the air on my driveway several times before it actually broke. So um, I don't think anyone's going to be throwing away around my drawers. So pocket screws are fine. So you can see my plywood rack is back there get that done and then this piece was small enough to go through the table saw so I just put it through my table saw and then back to wait what am I doing oh yeah so now I'm gonna cross cut it I would love room for one of those big filter slider sliding table saws but in this small shop I don't think it would benefit me well um, I'm adding a top support for the drawers now that way they won't tip up too far um, that was just a quick little tack into place. And now we are finally getting ready to paint. So now I've got to wheel everything around. Again, small shop, everything's on wheels. So everything can get moved around over and over and over and over and over again. It kind of gets old, but it's necessary. And this is my paint booth. Again, I have videos over all these kind of things, and... Just set up a paint booth, installed some exhaust fans. Um, this is water-based paint, so my fans aren't explosion-proof, so it's fine because, you know, they're water-based. Then we're clear-coating our top. I always do three coats on everything, and this turned out really nice. On the inside, I probably should have taped it off. Um, but that's a pain, and so, but sanding it down was also a pain, but I had to kind of sand off some of that paint before waxing the, uh, all the slides so that, you know, the drawers will open and close smoothly. Still refining this system. It turned out really nice. I actually did a project for this customer before, uh, with wood drawer slides, and she specifically requested that I use wood drawer slides on everything else I built them now. Um, I take a lot of pride in my drawers, so here I am, and this is kind of where I switched to uh, fully wood drawers just to make sure I could get it perfect and just fine-tuning that fit with, um, with the hand plane. Again, half-inch drawer bottoms just makes for, yes, a heavy drawer, but an indestructible beast of a drawer. Um, so here I drilled out for attaching the drawer faces and I use a Craig pocket screw to attach the drawer face but I drilled out a quarter inch hole in all the drawers first and that gave me just a little bit of wiggle room where I could get the drawer face held in place but have that little bit of adjustment to get those reveals perfect um, but spacers and shims people spacers and shims if you're wondering the colors on this the uh, paint is Durapoxy HP uh, Carbon, which is their, their black. And then the stain is Minwax Dark Walnut with uh, three coats of a Linmar Pre-Catalyzed Lacquer. Um, so I haven't jumped on that Rubio uh, Monocoat bandwagon yet, but I do have some coming. So stay tuned for a kind of a first impression video on 
whether or not I'm going to use that. And the reason I do is because I really don't want to spray any more than I have to. Because even though I was wearing a respirator, that stuff still gets on your skin. And I want to just maybe be a little bit safer in the shop. And I know someone's now going to comment, well, you should be doing this, this, and this, and wearing respirators all the time. And, you know, fully covered and, you know, you know, the safety. The safeties are among us. We'll comment on that. So we appreciate your comment, but you'll probably be ignored. Anyway, so fitting the drawer faces, getting those right. Um, you can kind of see it coming together. I really like the color combination. All my drawers work well. And now we're just getting it done. You can kind of see my stick light in the corner here, uh, that right side. Um, that was actually from Cam over at Blacktail Studio, recommended that in one of his videos. And I got it as an inspection light, and it has come in very handy. And anytime I can, uh, anytime you do any kind of drawer work, if you can match the grains up, and it just... It's subtle. Some people won't even notice it, but people notice it. Of course, on the stacked drawers, it didn't matter. And here's all the final pictures of it all done. I'm very happy with how this turned out. Uh, my client was exceedingly happy, and you kind of see the different angles that we did, some close-ups. And overall, I liked it. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite species of wood is. And... Also, I do try to answer every comment, so if you have a question or anything like that, let me know. And if I earned your subscription, hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you later.